So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining our satellite symposium on nocturia and bedwetting. We want to clarify and understand the differences between nocturia and bedwetting, all these differences that exist in this topic. We have an agenda here, and you can see it is well structured. We will have presentations, and afterwards we will have question and answers. There will be a, a, a very small uh, change in the program because Donald Blywise, our sleep specialist, has to leave the Congress, so we are jumping over the first discussion round. We will repeat this later, so we will give Donald Blywise all the time he needs to explain. We are an interdisciplinary forum, so we have urologists, we have a nephro urologist, we have a sleep scientist, we have a researcher, so we are interdisciplinary and we would like to be interactive. So what do you have to do when you have or when you open these books, the program books, in the back you have the question cards. There's a ni this nice image of the Jesus Christ status, Coco Vedum, and on the back you can ask questions. And these questions will be collected by the hostesses. There are two hostesses running around. Please give them to the hostesses and we are trying to, to clarify your question. Afterwards, at the, very, at the very end, we have a second evaluation form that's also in your program and we would kindly ask you to complete these question forms at the very end of the symposium. Meanwhile, we are kindly asking you to turn off your telephones because we are electronically um, saving this, this satellite symposium, which will be available later as electronic files. This is a fairing satellite symposium and obviously we need a sponsor. But the contact of our presentations were completely independent of the sponsor, so it reflects only our personal view on the topic, and it's not necessarily the view of the ICS or fairing company. We are starting with the first presentation, and I will present for you what is different about Noctoria. And as you know, it's only a symptom. I've got some disclosures to make. And obviously, it's only a symptom. I will talk about the different causes of Noctoria. I will tell you that Noctoria may be different from other forms of lower urinary tract symptoms. The factors or the causes may not be always related to the bladder or prostate. And urine overproduction at night, which we call nocturnal polyuria, is also a factor which is commonly uh, appearing in, in some patients. I will tell you tell you a little bit about the diagnostic strategy and about the treatment algorithms, how to treat Noctoria, as far as we know today. So the definition of Noctoria is the symptom that an individual has to wake one or more times to avoid at night. It is independent of age, gender, and the causes, and the associated bother. Once you avoid one time or more at night, this is called Noctoria. However, in the definition is also that each nocturnal void is preceded and followed by sleep. It has to be, otherwise it's nocturnal voiding frequency, and that's not necessarily identical to nocturia. The first morning void is excluded from the count, although the urine production of the first void has been produced at night. The patient always has to be conscious and aware of a full bladder to wake up and use the toilet, and this is different in nocturnal enoresis, where the patient is unconscious and voids in the bed, and this is bed wetting. So what about the prevalence of nocturnal enoresis and noctoria? Let's go first to nocturnal enoresis. Monosymptomatic nocturnal enoresis affects between 5 and 18% of children of different age groups. A number of studies have shown that a significant prevalence in school-age patients is still exists, and a small percentage of those children with nocturnal enoresis still suffers when they're adolescents. And you can see on the right side the bar graphs, where you can see the young children with age, five years, and compared to the adults with 19 years. Although this is appearing more frequently, the severity in the older population is higher than in the younger population. Boys in general are more affected 
than girls, and the history of enoresis in childhood may increase the risk of having nocturnal polyuria or nocturia in adult life. Now we are going to the adult population, and we have very good information about the adults first evaluated or once more evaluated in the Finno study by Kari Tikkinen. This was a Finno study, that means it was conducted in Finland. It was a survey of almost 4,000 uh, men and women, and the, sh and the study showed that nocturia and nocturia severity increase with age in men and in women. Most people of those had only one nocturnal void, and men were a little bit less frequently affected, appearing when we're talking about one void per night in 40% in men, 48% in women. But clinically relevant nocturia, defined as two or more voids, appeared in 13 and 14% respectively. What about the pathophysiology? If you want to break down the symptom nocturia, so voiding at night, sleeping before and afterwards, it may be due to the three main causes. It is nocturnal polyuria, 24-hour polyuria, or reduce bladder capacity. These are the three main forms we can have. However, behind these three main forms, there are a couple of diseases, uh, a couple of dysfunctions which may be responsible for the three main topics. For example, nocturnal polyuria can be caused by impaired arginine vasopressine uh, secretion, can be caused of congestive heart failure, sleep apnea, and lifestyle factors. Reduced bladder capacity, this is our domain of urology. For example, overactive bladder is causing reduced bladder capacity. Bladder outlet obstruction, interstitial cystitis, bladder cancer, bladder stones, you name it. So these are urological factors, and we also have factors associated with 24-hour polyuria, for example, diabetes mellitus and insipidus. When we are asking patients to come in for studies and ask the patients by newspaper advertisement, are you suffering of nocturia? Please come to my hospital. We have a study to offer. And then we break it down and look for the pathophysiology. And this was done with a European study and with a US American study. We can show that a great majority have nocturnal polyuria as the cause of nocturia. It was a little bit more frequent in, in the US. It's 88% compared to Europe, it was 76%. But the point is still valid that we have primarily nocturnal polyuria as a cause of nocturia. We always have to take in, into consideration that especially the adult patients, they may have an overlap in pathophysiology. So it is not only nocturnal overproduction of urine, but it can be in adult men, nocturnal polyuria in combination with bladder outlet obstruction and the overactive bladder or the chooser overactivity. So we can have a broad overlap of symptoms, so it might be quite challenging in some patients to find out the exact cause or causes of nocturia. Again, we can have nocturnal polydipsia or polyuria polydipsia, edema or diabetes, diuretic medication, and all possible combinations is possible. Therefore, we have to assess the patient carefully. How are we doing this? And this is recommended by all common guidelines on LUTs, OAB, and so on. Use a frequency volume chart. You are documenting for two to three days, and I do it un uh, until seven days each day in a, in a week. We document the drinking volume, we document the voiding volume, and maybe we uh, uh, and also the time, and we ask the patient, when do you go to bed, when do you wake up, and then we can calculate all the parameters associated with a frequency voiding chart, and what's coming out is basically what you can find is a, is a, is a reduced maximum voided volume, then it's, uh, it's an indices of uh, reduced bladder capacity, or you can document a 24-hour or evening polydipsia, so it's an Topic, increased fluid intake. You may uh, diagnose global polyuria, defined as a 24-hour urine volume, 40 milliliters or more of kilogram body weight. Or you find nocturnal polyuria, which is defined as more than 20% of the 
uh, of the 24 hour urine volume excreted at night in young males or females and 33 in the older population. This is called nocturnal polyuria. So you have, based on the frequency volume chart, a really good idea what is the main topic why the patient has to void at night. Again, this is not the entire truth. Then you have to go in the detailed analysis what exactly is the cause. For example, you have reduced bladder capacity. It can be due to primary and bladder, uh, primary or secondary uh, bl bladder or prostate disorders. So you have to do uh, a urinalysis to exclude urinary tract infection. You have to measure post voyager urine and later diagnose bladder outlet obstruction, detrusor underactivity. You have to perform urophlometry. So you have to find the exact diagnosis by additional assessment. But again, you have a rather good idea when you're doing a frequency volume chart. And again, I'm repeating myself, it is recommended by almost all guidelines on LUTs OEB. However, if you have nocturia, you use a frequency volume chart, full history, but you do not find anything. It's not the patient telling you nonsense or telling you fairy tales. There might be some disorders which we are not able to diagnose as urologists or urogynecologists. It may be associated with sleep problems, psychological problems, cardiac diseases, gynecological diseases. And then you should refer to the specialist to find out what the exact cause is. Now coming to the treatment, and the treatment goes to this main complex again. So we have reduced bladder capacity, we have uh, evaluated increased fluid intake, we have evaluated increased diuresis in frequency volume chart with all the diagnostic tests. And then we are going first for behavioral treatment. For example, we have polyuria, polydipsia, and we could recommend for the patient stop drinking before going to bed at least two hours. You have congestive heart failure, edema, lift up your legs. This is behavioral treatment. So this is the first line to treat the patient. However, sometimes it's not enough and then we have to go in the deep pathophysiology and look what is the cause, how can we treat the cause. Very obvious, decreased functional bladder capacity, then you might have to choose our overactivity. When you have to choose our overactivity, you apply antimuscarinics. If you have LUTs BPH, so you have obstruction, you can use alpha blockers, 5-alpha reductors inhibitors and so on. But if you have secondary causes, for example, urinary tract infection, a bladder stone, you treat the underlying cause. Again, when you have nocturnal polyuria, this is a disease where you excrete abnormal amounts of fluids during the night, you can use arginine vasopressin analogues for fluid restriction and this may be uh, a good and valid treatment for children and adults with nocturnal polyuria, but don't forget there are other causes, cardiac insufficiency, sleep apnoia. So all the treatment should be based on a thorough invest investigation of the patient. The definite diagnosis of the etiology of, of nocturia supports, of course, better patient outcomes. The more we know about the pathophysiology, the more specific we can apply the treatment. But we always have to care in mind the etiology of the symptom nocturia is complex and multifactorial. Not only one cause can be responsible in the individual patient, but many uh, causes can be existing. So we have, to, um, uh, we have to be aware that nocturia may be independent and co can co-occur with other female and, and other male lower urinary tract symptoms, such of course, for example, bladder artery obstruction or the choose overactivity, overactive bladder. And the treatment choice should be guided by careful patient history and primarily analyses, analyses of frequency volume charts. Thank you very much. And I would suggest we are just going over to Donald Blywise, who is giving us the presentation on, on sleep.